there's a new Strymon El Capistan out. What's it like compared to the old one? Let's find out. Hello everyone and welcome to That Pedal Show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. Welcome to 2023. This is the first video we filmed in 2023. Indeed. And we're all about the Strymon El Capistan today. Uh, because why, Dan? Because it's a classic and Strymon have released an updated version. Um, the El Cap was out before the timeline, you know, and it made a massive... It was sensational when it came out. Um, that one on the right, that's mine that I, I've had forever. And, you know, it's great and I've used it for ages and I was very interested when they brought out this updated version. Indeed, without a full history lesson, Strymon was a very early pioneer in digital modelling uh, and extremely well renowned for it. And the LCAP is its take on tape Echo. Yeah. Tape delay. Yeah. And the original El Capistan had three tape echoes in it. Yes. You can see them there on the top panel. A fixed, a multi-head. And a single. And a single head. The fixed is where the delay time is fixed and the head moves up and down. Right. The single is where the delay uh, head is fixed and the you can change the tape speed. Oh, nice. Um, but then they have the multi-head version, which is lovely. Bunch of other features. We will just do a quick recap of the L cap because whenever we talk about tape delay, we always seem to leave it out. <laughs> so we'll do a quick recap before we, because I guess the questions today are number one, is V2 better than V1? Does it sound different? What mm. additional features does it offer? We'll cover that off as the main part of the video. But then what context are we sitting in here? We've got an actual real tape echo. So beautiful. Yes, my old Roland RE201 Space Echo. I think there was a sort of silent moment of reverence there, which is, seems fitting. Oh, it's just, <laughs> oh, it's so magic. I love this thing. And the other famous tape echo being the uh, Echoplex, which is a single head, but the reason we've chosen this one is because it's a multi-head. Yep. And on that, you could add your Miatsis, you could add your Watkins copycats. There's loads available, but that's the one we're going to use for comparison today. And we've also got something at the kind of more entry level of the market, which is the Fender Space Delay, which also has a multi-head option. So if you don't want all this functionality, what can you do with a multi-head uh, at a much lower price point? And what do we think it sounds like Yeah. in comparison? Very good. So LCAP then, I think we're going to focus primarily on the multi-heads today. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
maybe with a dip into the single head stuff. What was great about the El Cap, Dan? Okay. So before the El Cap was like the DL4, and that was that was the first time we'd heard lots of different tape emulate, lots of different delay emulations in a pedal that you could emulate, and it's it's great. It's still great. Still yeah. sounds great. Sound all its own, isn't it? It really is. It really is. Just mention Bill Frizzell in passing as a as a right. very famous Line Six DL4 user. You always know it's him. You always know it's the DL4. Yeah, um, and the L cap was what I loved about the L cap was it was a this is, we're just doing tape delay. Uh, we're not trying to be everything to everybody. We are going to go to the nth degree about what is fantastic about tape delay. Mm. So, um, we, you know, we're talking about Strymon before. So Strymon, there was a company called Damage Control, which basically started Strymon off. And uh, Pete Selly, Celli, yep. um, the designer, it was the first sort of, for me, it was my first uh, understanding of the nth degree that he will go to to get things right and the, how he understands what's going on in these units yeah. to create the sound and that he gets, you know, in that thing. Fair to say it was a step change from, from previous digital Absolutely. modeling, wasn't it? Also Fidelity, the functionality. Shark, the Shark DSP yeah. that they, they had in there. Yeah. So it was super powerful. Um, it was, but still compact. Mm. Um, but I remember like, you know, in the 10 spirits days, both Dave Gregory and I both had one on our boards and Dave played some of the most beautiful solos I've ever heard through Using that. that. Let's have a listen magic. to it then. So we're in the multi-head mode here. We'll go, we'll just give you a quick flick through the main features just to kick off um, with also a look at some of the secondary functions which are available as we'll go through. Where do you start with the LCAP then, Dan? Well, um, so we're running we're running the LCAPs in stereo today, so we hear the, the whole lovely gloriousness. Um, we've got the super reverb and the matchless left and right, um, basically. <laughs> so, the original. I, you know what? That is the trick of music stores. Yeah. <laughs> so you go into a music store and you pick up a guitar and you plug it down, you try it out and you go, oh, it sounds amazing. But all of the guitars in the music store are resonating. resonating. If, if that wasn't sympathetic obvious. Sympathetic resonating. He played an A chord and this guitar just started resonating A. Do it again. <laughs> there you go. Like nothing on. <laughs> Great. It's great. <laughs> awesome. Sorry. <laughs> Welcome to that pedal show. <laughs> All right then. Come on then. So here's the yes, the original. First thing about the V2, the reverb's got its own knob. The old one doesn't. Uh, so you're searching for the reverb. Yeah, which is the reverb knob? Like, okay. I'm turn that it's off for time. a time. So you've yeah, got to yeah. press, yeah. bypass press and tap and together. Now turn the time down. So we've just turned the reverb off, so you can't hear that for a second. Right. So go on. Straight off the bat, you've got these two awesome controls, which are features of actual tape echoes as they start to wear. Yeah. So on the original tape echo, you wouldn't necessarily have had a control for tape age or wow and flutter. It was a mechanical thing that happened as the tape wore. Yep. And also the the mechanics of the motor and the you know how it's turning the the capstan 
yeah. and spinning the tape around. Which is why it's called the El Capistan. And then, and so that isn't, that becomes uh, less uniform and you start to get this, and then there's the noise in the tape. And so what I love, I think one of the things about the El Cap that was amazing, bef before the El Cap, I had a T-Rex uh, replica. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Fabulous sounding thing. I had a T-Rex replica. Right, really great, right? But you had, the controls were traditional. It's like um, you had a couple of different uh, tonal options on the repeats, um, but it was, you know, it was a really lovely sounding tape thing. The, what the L cap did was really specific. It says, use this knob to change how old the tape is. They're not saying this is your treble control for the tape. Yeah, right. They're saying, they they're a saying it's, not, it's, not tre it's not just about treble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When the tape is really old, it picks up less signal and, you know, and certainly less top end. And that's the reason it's dark. It's not just not a tone control. <coughs> Excuse me. And then the wow and flutter, it's not just a sine wave on the on a modulation. It's like, no, it's a lot more random than that. There's loads more to it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so in addition to that stuff that we've just seen, um, we've got a bunch of what they call live edit functions. Users of LCAP will know this. Mm -hmm. um, and these are accessed via secondary functions on the top panel. Now, uh, we just showed you <coughs> one of the ones, which is the reverb top left. Now, the other three, um, or at least some of the other buttons, do other things. Low end contour, yes. which is not the same as tape age. No. So if we turn the tape age back up to in the middle there somewhere, have a listen to what happens when we um, change the low end contour of the repeats. Another one of those tone shaping things that can just really help that delay sit where you want. So also, you know, when you're looking at the space echo, because you've got bass and treble on the repeats. Yeah. So it's lovely that they include the option for that. What's slightly frustrating is that they didn't include what those secondary functions are on the on the box. So you so you've to, got to get the manual out and you know look you need through. This. In addition to that, you've got tape crinkle. So as well as tape age and wow and flutter, you've also then got what they call tape crinkle, which is the knackedness yeah. of the tape. It's it how gets... knackered the tape is, yeah. absolutely. And that might happen, for example, when it all spools off and uh, tape echo owners will know about this and you sit there scratching your head. I remember winding that tape back on one day, me and Catherine stood here with tape all around our fingers, trying to get it back in there. Awesome. And what may happen as a result of that is some crinkle. Right. So his, his crinkle is on the wow and flutter. Right, go. I think the delay time's too short to be able to really hear it. Okay. Go on. And if you haven't already turned off because this is so boring, uh, we've also got uh, tape bias. Um, machine bias from under bias to over bias, higher bias levels reduce result in reduced echo volume and limited headroom with dirty sounding repeats. Yeah. So we're talking about increments of very similar elements of age, all of which go from clean, pristine, new tape to knackered old tape. And you might like different elements of that knackeredness. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, seeing as we're going to flog this horse to absolute death, let's kill it. Um, keep going. <laughs> Nice. 
and this is all important because there can be a great misunderstanding between analog delay and tape delay. Yeah. Because we associate a lot of that broken artifact of, of what happens at the end of a bucket brigade analog delay. As it is with tape, a lovely new tape is the most pristine, high fidelity, clean, beautiful thing. Absolutely. But then as that tape wears, you go through this magic little spot there mm -hmm. where it gets to a point that you're happy with. And I think this was the step change. Yeah. Because there was such a deep understanding of that that went into this pedal. So like up to that point, is that you had your tape delay and, and the guy says, well, yeah, no, they all thought those delays sound really good. But what I love about this is all of these things. Yeah. So you could disappear down that rabbit hole of finding that perfect combination of, of brokenness, basically. Yeah, yeah. All right. That's one of the reasons why we like the L cap, because it does all of that. So what about V2 then? What have they done in V2? Okay. They... So the number of things they've changed, they have changed the uh, input preamp. They're now using a, a, a JFET design input preamp, um, but it is true stereo. So you can have a stereo input. You can have a stereo input on the old one as well, but you've got to take the back off and uh, put little clippy things on. You Flick know. of a rear panel switch, which I'll show you now. Yes. Which, so that's really handy. Uh, more powerful processing, which actually reduces the current draw on the it, pedal, makes an, it more efficient. An ARM chip, An apparently. ARM chip, as opposed to the Shark DSP. Yeah. The new one has an ARM DSP in it. There we are. Really cool. So more more, um, more mumbo. Yep. Uh, M1D1. M1D1. One of the uh, annoyances, the big format Strymon pedals have very good MIDI, yep. usable. Old ones, not so much. These little ones, the new small format ones have... MIDI. Yep, up to 300 preset locations in there. You know, as you can see, just from going through those sounds, there's there's so much that you can do with it. Yeah, so every single one of those parameters is editable and storable as a separate yeah. part of a separate preset. Yeah, so if, if like, if the L cap, if all the sounds that you want are there, you know, because I, I have seen boards with, uh, so one board that had three L caps on. Oh, wow just because loved the sound so much, but needed access to those sounds. Yeah, now they're yeah. all in there. And th the most obvious change is it has an extra knob. Now the reverb is available off a knob on the top panel instead of being on a secondary function. So one of the big things about the uh, Space Echo is its small box spring reverb, which I absolutely love. The L cap has a spring reverb in it, but it's as a secondary function. And loads of people love the reverb. Yeah. And so now they've put it on a separate knob on the top so you don't have to stop what you're doing and spin yeah. around and one do of, this One stuff. of the nice, well, we will get there eventually. One of the nice things about the new secondary function is on the old one, you've got to hold down the tap and the bypass and do the function. So you need yep. two hands. Yep which if you're leaning over with your guitar is a pain because yep. your guitars could potentially fall off. If you're in the studio, you've got one hand doing one thing, holding a coffee, smoking a fag, whatever it is you're doing. <laughs> um, that means an entirely different thing in the US, I know. Um, here, you only need to hold down this button. They flash green. You can make your secondary adjustments. Bosh. Light is green, trap is clean. I was, that was almost going wrong there, Dan. That is great. For those of you who fast forwarded to this part of the video, <laughs> welcome. Um, now we're actually going to compare the sounds. Great. Having uh, preambled enough. Where, what's your, give us a multi-head sound you really like. From okay, the so this one, then. from the original one. Yeah. There's the Andy Timmons thing where you'd swear there's reverb on that. Yeah, so right? the reverb is still off. Reverb's still off. But so this is like without it. 
It's so good, it's so good. Okay, so now turn the reverb up a little bit. So as a, instead of a chorus, for example, a bit, bit of compression on that. Also, you can add gain to that, and it doesn't, uh, there's nothing harsh about it, right? So if I add, add a bit of, get the Mark II on. Yeah, so it, it, that's a sound that I could basically use for anything. Let's hear the new one then. Let's uh, set the knobs up in a similar position and let's see how close it gets. Yeah, I mean, we're going to... We are going to, yes, of course. Have to assume that the, the other functions are somewhat the same. Let's, let's see. Let's, let's just see. Let's just start. Let's get a sound that's similar in here and back to back. That's very good. That's very good. How do we know if they sound different? Do they sound different? I think that there is a difference. Yeah, I think there is a, there's a very slight difference. But the 
One of the things about having those secondary functions is you never really know where you are. No, no, no. Well, that's why I tried it's, to... It's really tricky. Um, yeah, I think you'd have to go through and set everything everything to zero. But saying that, they are as they you know they're so close. They both sound fantastic. Well, the MIDI and the reverb is worth it alone, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. If if those two things are something that you that you need, but I guess the point I'm driving at is you don't have to feel too bad about the old one not sounding as good so far. So one of the I think one of the great things about the new one coming to market is if that's a sound that you love and you don't need 300 presets, there's going to be loads. Of there's going to be loads on reverb that you just <laughs> jump on and grab one because they they really are sensational things. All right, let's um. Before we move on then, I want to try some of the single head comparisons in a minute with a different yeah, guitar. Yeah, sure. Let's hear, so we've got that sound set up then. I know it's only one sound among so many that are available from the LCAP, but let's hear what that can do in comparison and what our much more affordable For sure. option can do okay. in comparison. Great. Okay, so the only caveat is these are, these are in stereo at okay. the moment. And why wouldn't you? Because it's a glorious thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's let's have a listen to the. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, so you will have heard the mix in stereo so far. I'll just mix it in mono from here on out, and then that will. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll pan them straight down the middle so that the the stereo ness is. Okay. Is helped. All right. So. Levels much louder in that. Oh, it turned out? Yeah. Thank you. 
And they all do a pretty great job. When it's that complex with the yeah. multiple heads and the loads of repeats and playing something that's fairly busy, I think the Fender stands up unbelievably well. Incredibly well. There's no doubt that the Space Echo's got a bit more three D ness to it. Yeah, I would and, say. We're, and we always get we always come back to that, don't we? With when we look at the real thing. Yeah. Um, and it's it's why yeah they're still very valuable and still very sought after. However, the what these give you is they give you that character without having to worry about. You know, these things are so fragile and so temperamental. Yeah, and, and there's, there are other elements of it where it imparts its own harmonic structure. It does overdrive a little bit, and you might not want that. Yeah, absolutely. You, you might want that clean, bell-like. So at the moment, this tape has been through the ringer. So one one thing to note about these machines is um, the tape is going all the time, right? Mm. So if you do a gig... Yeah, yeah. And you let's say you use the the delay on twenty percent, which is a lot. Yeah. Right? But that other eighty percent that you're not using the delay, the tape is still going. Those heads are still getting worn, yeah, yeah. you know? So they do tape maintenance. I, yeah, that ship has sailed, doesn't it? There are people who still do gig with them, but very, very few and far between. Most of the yeah, places you're going to find that now is in a studio somewhere. Yeah, and yeah. We know we know people that mix with them and really love them uh, for tracking as well, but also for mixing. And in that environment, they are fantastic. But yeah, on your pedal board, it makes it's it's a no it's a total no brainer, isn't it? Yeah, indeed. Okay, um, can I, I'd love to hear uh, some strat with it. Okay. Or, you know, or, or a guitar of your choice. No, I'm happy to play strap. Seeing as we've been hearing single heads all the way, let's compare one of the mono head. Yeah, the, the, yeah. from multi heads to, to the mono heads. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 
you land out on. Uh, we weren't listening to a lot of the long tail on it there. It was mostly all in the sort of foreground of the repeats, but that's perfectly inspiring. Yeah. Perfectly inspiring. Which we, did you, were you flicking through the space delay as well? I there? didn't get to the space no, delay because okay. that we had that in. Can that do singles? Mm, yeah, it can, I think. I'm not sure. I think it's in the, in the pattern Patterns. up. I think it's maybe. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Delay is ace. It is truly wonderful. Tape delay is particularly ace. It, yes. It's so inspiring with the way it, 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 it you know, we haven't, we've barely scratched the surface of what the El Capistan can do. Yeah. And yet, I'm perfectly happy with the sound of the old one. The, the old one or the? The old El Cap. Oh, the, man. I've got no problems with the sound of the old El Cap. Absolutely. So adding that reverb, adding the extra functionality from M1, D1, and making the uh, secondary function edit easier easier, yeah. are all wins. Tick, 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 tick. No question. However, if you're not bothered about any of that stuff and you just really love the sound of it, then grab an old one because they are just ace. Killer. Yeah, yeah. I don't feel the need to upgrade. Even with M1 D1? Well, because Dan uses MIDI, so. I do, but for the, the MIDI, the delay that I use for the MIDI stuff with presets is all pretty uh, textural and ambient. Mm. What I was always using the LCAP for yeah. was really simple, beautiful tape delay when I didn't want to take this out. The original one still has a favorite switch that you can, you can plug a TRS. Jack oh into God, it we didn't even get into that. There's but, there's all kinds of other ways you can control absolutely. it. Not, but, we, an expression pedal control and all of that, which we haven't even talked of course. about. But we're just saying with the original, you can still switch between two sounds. Yeah. You know, which, uh, and I never even did that. I just had the, the one sound, which was enough. Yeah. Um, but, you know, functionality wise, yes, it's an absolute worthy upgrade. If, you, if you're going to use all that stuff, brilliant. If that If you don't need that stuff... There are some bargains to be had. Yeah, yeah. God, I'm just I'm envisaging a board with a preamp Mark II, an L cap, and a CXM78. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, Come you, on. Could, you could cover some ground with yeah, those three, couldn't you? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wonderful. Nice. Excellent. That was really fun. Yeah. Nice to be making some noises again. It is nice to be making noises. I think there's a million things that we didn't cover, so don't go too mad in the comments. But I think what we've concluded is. The new one sounds great, and it has some functionality upgrades. Indeed. Big surprise. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. Brilliant. Well, there you go. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. A massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is... Andersons of Guildford in Surrey. And our mates in Australia. Would be Pedal Empire of Brisbane, Queensland. Massive thank you to anyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grabbed some merchandise, some T-shirts and strings and pedals and things. Uh, this is the primary way we fund the show. So massive thank you to anyone that's gone there. Indeed. And that pedalshop.com in the US, um, where you can pick up all manner of lovely pedals, accessories, amps, and other kinds of things. And, and certainly... And Canada. And ca Canada. So wing batter. Um, Canada. Last but certainly not least, a massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. 
Uh, thank you so much for your support. Indeed, thank you. Yep, we have monthly giveaways and our podcast for the live shows on uh, uh, VCQ on Monday. We have available for our patrons. Welcome to 2023. And uh, yes, have a fantastic week and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.